proportional control systems. We're going to consider two different variations of this. Firstly, without a ramp generator, and secondly, with a ramp generator. So we've got a block diagram of a proportional control system where we've got a difference amplifier, which is going to be comparing the input from the reference and the feedback from the sensor. It's going to provide what we call the error signal. This goes into a voltage amplifier, which provides the drive signal to the power amplifier, which provides the, um, the power for the output transducer, whatever that is. And then we've got the sensor is going to be sensing the conditions of the output. The error signal is going to be the difference between the reference and the sensor, which means that when we're close to where we want to be, uh, the feedback is close to the reference, then it's going to be very small, which means that the drive is going to be small when we're near, near the desired output state, which means we get no hunting. Uh, so an example of this would be a position control system where the motor is going to slow down and stop when it's approaching the desired position, hopefully. The on-off system, uh, the error, well, the drive signal is going to be full power, even when it's close to the desired output state, so it's going to overshoot and constantly go one way and the other. So here's the difference amplifier circuit. We've got V-sensor and V-ref going into it. The error signal is V-ref minus V-sensor in this case, because we've got V-ref going to the non-inverting input with a plus sign. We've got V-sensor going to the inverting input with a minus sign. The error signal is going to be zero when VREF and VSensor are the same. And if VREF is greater than VSensor, it's going to be positive. The drive signal from the voltage amplifier is just, is just going to be the error signal multiplied by the gain. So when VSensor and VREF are the same, it's going to be 0 volts. So we've got a graph here which shows um, the sensor voltage and we've got the error signal. And because it's just uh, multiplied by gain gives you the drive signal, We've got a drive signal on this graph as well. So let's just say that we've, we've set a reference voltage here, representing, for example, position in the position control system. So the difference between VREF and VSensor is going to be the error signal here and the drive signal. And as we run this on, the drive signal is quite large at the moment, so it's going to be running fast. But then it runs slower and slower and slower as the sensor gets closer to the reference. And eventually, the error signal is going to be zero. In this circuit, it will always aim for the error signal to be zero. So when V-sensor and V-ref are the same, the error signal is zero, and it will stop. And then if we drop down uh, the reference voltage here, we've now got the reference voltage is less than the sensor. So the error signal is going to be negative. So it's going to drive the motor the other way, the other direction, until the error signal is zero when the sensor and ref are the same. Now having a look at what happens when we put a ramp generator in here. In this case, I've swapped over the reference and the sensor voltages here because the ramp generator is an inverting circuit. So when this is positive, the output, the drive output is going to ramp downwards. In both cases, uh, as, as with the previous case, the error is going to be small when we're near the desired output state. But in this case, the drive is going to be constant, not necessarily zero. It's going to be a constant voltage when we're at the desired output state. But again, it means we get no hunting. An example of this could be a motor speed control where we've got a speed sensor here and the motor is going to reach a constant speed. So the difference amplifier and ramp generator we can build in this way. So that's the difference amplifier as before, but we've swapped over the reference and the sensor. So we've now got the sensor going into the non-inverting input. And then this is the ramp generator here, providing the drive signal. Again, the error is going to be zero if the sensor and reference are at the same voltage. And in this case, it's going to be negative if, um, if the reference is larger than the sensor, which will mean that the drive will ramp upwards. And the drive is going to be constant if V-sensor and V-ref are the same. So again, looking at the graphs, we've got V-sensor, V-error, and V-drive. Uh, I've separated out V-error and V-drive, and we'll see why once we get into the graphs. So to start with, let's say the sensor's at naught. So motor speed control, uh, it's not turning at all. The error, which is the difference between these two, is now negative, which is going to be driving the drive signal from the ramp generator, going to be driving it upwards. As the motor turns, it gets faster and faster and faster as so the V-sensor rises. But as it gets closer to V-ref, the error signal gets closer to naught. And again, with this circuit, 
um, the aim of the circuit is to get the error signal to be naught. And a drive signal, as this becomes naught, the drive signal becomes constant. We're going to drop the reference voltage down, and at this instant, the difference between these now shows as the, the error signal there. And it's, uh, it's positive and it's quite large, which is going to be driving the ramp generator downwards. So a large positive input ramp generator is going to be driving downwards, which means that the motor is going to slow down. And as it approaches the reference voltage, the error signal, which is the difference between these, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that the uh, which means that the ramp generator is going to be ramping downwards at a slower and slower rate. And then eventually the error signal is zero, which means that the drive signal is going to be constant and we end up going at a constant speed.